Facebook. is our distinguished guest, honored uh, by the Mystery Writers Association with the Grand Master Award as the author of such classic blockbusters as I, The Jury, uh, Vengeance is Mine, The Big Kill, The Killing Man, uh, his best-selling uh, new uh, comics character, Mike Danger, is being developed by Miramax Films, uh, and he lives in South Carolina. Mickey Spillane, welcome to Mornings with Tim and Al. Hey, I'm glad to speak to you. And all right now, I'm up in snow country where I really like to be. Now, yeah. where are you now? I'm up in the north, about 65 miles of Albany in New York. All right. It's not snowing yet. It's just a nice day. Yeah, you know, it took a long time for fall weather to get here, but it finally uh, it, it got cool enough that it's really refreshing even in St. Louis. Uh, yeah, and back down where I live, down in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, it's still hot. Well, Mike, Mike Hammer is back uh, with uh, Black Alley. How many novels now is this, uh, Mickey, for you? I don't know. I'm up in the 40s someplace, but I never count those things. I'm a writer. I'm not an author, so I'm not concerned about it. All those things. I'm, a, I'm in business. You know? so I have a job just like you have. Mm -hmm. How did you get started? Are you, or are you surprised that your your books have taken off and and the, you've really become a household name? No, I always knew that was going to happen. <laughs> How did you get I was started? Not optimistic about yeah. it. I just was a good merchandiser, and I knew I. As I say, it's a business. I like to write. I can write, and I like to sell these things. So the whole thing worked out. Uh, as a successful business enterprise, as well as is, I hate the word art artistic. You know, it's not our work. It's something you like to do. I feel a good mechanic. And uh, and how long did you, when you were in high school, a junior high school, did you, you realize you had a gift for writing? Oh, I've always been a writer. I've been doing this all my life. I turned pro when I was on my first year out of high school. I was only seventeen, but it worked. Does it get easier with each book? Sure it does, absolutely. Yeah, I, one thing we have, we don't have talent. Talent is what you lose. Mm -hmm. Like if you're a, a great pianist and you've got arthritis, in your head you're still a great pianist, but your fingers don't work anymore. So you lost your talent. But now a writer, he can, as he gets older, he has more background knowledge, more experience, so he should be a better writer. I could always punch a type out of key with my nose if I had to, I guess, mm -hmm. or you could dictate. Do you get old? He should get better. Do you remember the first time you got that acceptance slip from a publisher saying they wanted to publish your book? The, the feeling. No, I knew they were going to publish it. <laughs> I was waiting for my money. <laughs> that, that's the big part of it. Hey, the only reason you got you're doing what you're doing is you get paid, right? Mm -hmm. A part of it. Well, part of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's the answer to it. And the better you are, the more you're going to get paid. Yeah, you know, it's one of these things we get to sit behind a microphone for four hours a day and act like ourselves. It's a, it's really, a, a, you know, the boss is coming in town. We shouldn't talk too loud. We'll say, hey, you guys uh, enjoy your job that much. Why don't you work for free? If people ask me, they say, how fast is it? How fast do you write a book? I say, it all depends on how bad they need the money. Mm. I was uh, watching an interview that Joseph Wambaugh did one time with Larry King, and Larry King was asking him how he wrote a book. And he said he, uh, he limits himself to 500 words a day, and then he... Uh, he treats himself to something. Uh, what about you? How, how does Mickey Spillane uh, discipline well, I, himself? I, I, I do a lot more than 500 words a day. I probably do. I work for about eight hours a day. I'm now at my age now. My God, I can't sit as long as I could when I was a younger guy. You don't mind us asking how old you are? Do you? I'm 80. 80 years you imagine old. Imagine that. My camera has been on the market for 50 years. Man, oh man. Isn't that something? You know, I don't think that way. I don't wear eyeglasses. I got a full head of hair. Hmm. So it's hard to picture me. I look at myself, I say, are you 80? Good grief. <laughs> you know, as I listen, and I know it's the same as with Al, when we listen to some of our old interviews, we think, oh, I wish I had asked that, I wish I had asked that, I wish I hadn't asked that. Are you that way when it comes to your books? Nah. Nah. The, as you write, you know, my old books, they're very successful. Mm -hmm. I'm more concerned with what I'm doing now. People say, what is your best book? And I tell them, I say, I'm going to say what any writer would say. It's either the one you just finished or the one you're working on. Mm -hmm. And right now, it's the one I'm working on. It keeps yeah. getting better. Yeah. Uh, when when we listen to some of our, our old tapes, I go through two things. I'll either listen to some of those, and I'll be embarrassed and say, "I can't believe I used to sound like that," or I I'll know what you mean. Or I'll say, "You know, I, that was a that was pretty good. I forgot that I was able to do that kind of stuff." Uh, do you go through the same thing? Are there any books that you look at and you're really embarrassed that you got your name on? And say, "Man, I can't believe I wrote that." Or you go back and say, "Hey, you know, that's a pretty good book." 
No, I don't, I'm not embarrassed about them. I, when you write a book, if you... Like, I, I never used... I never swore much in my book. I never used... I don't like dirty language anyway. But if you write street language... Sometimes I look at it and I say, gee, I don't talk like that. Why am I writing stuff like that? That is what the people on the streets talk like. I don't have to do that. I never have to worry about embarrassing my, myself by swearing in public or something because I don't use that kind of language. Why do you think people do that? I don't know. They have no vocabulary, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they get used to other people doing it around them. I thought, during my years in the military, have you been in the Army? Oh, yeah, I was in the Air Force. Oh, Three years, nine why. months. You don't know what happens to your language if you stick around too long. Mm. You know, the F word is common. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I, I, I always was able to avoid that sort of a thing. And I, I don't want to get tied up in it. I'm not one of those people that swear like that. How does a person know whether they have a book in them? Oh, you know it when you start off writing. People, if you're a writer, you are a writer. But just like a, an artist can paint or draw when he's a kid. Mm -hmm. I can't draw where the hoop of a good art appreciator. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have anything to do with doing it. I knew I was going to be a writer. I like to tell stories. How many times should a person be rejected before they realize, look, maybe this just isn't what I should be doing? I mean, there have been, uh, I'm sure, a number of authors that have been rejected time after time after time, but they stuck with it. How do you know when to throw in the towel and say, okay, maybe it's something else I should be doing? They usually start to death first. They quit in a hurry. People come to me when they're up in the 30s and 40s, and I want to learn to write. And I say, why don't you learn to be a brain surgeon? It's a lot easier. Mm -hmm. It's another thing you can teach people to do. It's something you know instinctively. You ever see people have a, an, a very beautiful ability to do something physically? Mm -hmm. and we all have. We see people who've got abilities that we, have, we don't have. But we have our own. Mm -hmm. And if you stick to what you can do the best, you're better off. Your desires are really way past you. You might desire to be a, a, a pilot, but you've got bad eyes. So mm -hmm. what good is that? Mm -hmm. If you weren't a writer, what do you think you would be? I'd be a pilot. I've been flying all my life. And I'd be, I would have been an airline pilot. I was a fighter pilot during World War II, and I stayed with flying. But by now, I would not be able to fly because they kick you out. Of, you know, you, you, you can't fly for pa passengers after 60. Mm -hmm. And... You know, that's, that's an awful thing. The thing you like to do most, you can't do. Luckily, being a writer, nobody sees me writing. They don't know what I look like. So I can write like a young kid or a, or a country fella or a city fella. It's a very it's an advantage I have being a writer. What did you think when you heard about John Denver's uh, airplane oh, crash? Man, that, I, that was a home-built aircraft. Yeah. And I stay clear of those things. Man, I, I like the go by things that are well-known, capable of doing what they're supposed to do. That's too bad. Yeah. Did you know him? No, I never met you. I never mm -hmm. met one of the few guys in business I don't know. Yeah. Have you uh, Have you had any close calls in the air? No. Nah. <laughs> I've, I've always been very fortunate in that respect. Yeah. I uh, was very careful, too. I didn't do. I didn't try to do things that I shouldn't have done. Mm. I, I don't go for, like, extreme skiing and all that sort of thing. Yeah. Man, skiing... I, I go down Chicken Little Hill now. <laughs> <laughs> I look at that big stuff and say, I used to do that. No more. Yeah. But I still got the... I'm going out to buy a new pair of skis today. You know that? Really? I'm going to put them in the corner and look at them. When am I going to use them? <laughs> uh, I better not buy them today. I'm just thinking about that now. With you being 80 years old, uh, and you've been famous for how many years now? Oh, uh, well, for at least 50. But before that, when I was in the comic book business, the kids all knew me. Uh -huh. I'm back in the comic book business again. Yeah, you've had, I'm sure, scores of friends that have uh, have passed away. Do you think much about death? No, I don't think about death. I don't expect to die. <laughs> I'm one of Jehovah's Witnesses. If you talk to them, you'll get their idea of it. But uh, I, I don't think like other people. I never did. I never. I'm never worried about things the way they do. Mm. I try to live a nice life and enjoy myself. You say you are a Jehovah's Witness? Uh-huh. Are you? How, how did that come about? How did that... uh, Somebody knocked on my door and I said, hey, I'm going to look at I want to investigate this. It sounds too good to be true. And I found out it wasn't too good to be true. Mm. It was right. Anyway, next time one calls, answer the door and have them talk to you. Mm. Now, uh, what were you before that or... Uh... Had you been in the other religion before you got oh, involved? Yeah. My dad was Catholic. My mother was Protestant. I was christened in both churches. I was <laughs> mm. 
That's why we moved from New York to Elizabeth, New Jersey when I was a month old. Mm. So we didn't get caught up in that mess because apparently the families were pretty <laughs> antagonistic about it. Had you had you read the Bible before uh, before the Jehovah's Witnesses knocked on your door? Not really. No, no, I wouldn't say so. I was. Uh, I thought about I knew certain things like people do today, you know. Then when I found out what the what the answers was, my God, I can't believe this. Then I went back there. I did a, a good research into all these things. I said, my word, it's right. Um, had you run into any born again Christians who? Oh yeah. <laughs> what, what what was that experience like? Well, it doesn't. I, we do do the same thing. When we knock on doors, we're talking to people. We listen to them. We try to give them the information from the Bible. Mm -hmm. We let them read. They can use any Bible they want. We don't care. Mm -hmm. uh, but what what was your experience before you were a Jehovah's Witness? What was your experience like with born again Christians? Well, I never had any experience with them. So they never tried to share Christ with you or anything of that nature. No, because most of them don't know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. And they all have they all have wild ideas about the, the scriptures. The Bible is very plain. What they don't understand. A lot of people go for the they say the King James Bible. Well, this is Shakespearean English. They don't they can't read what they read in those days when you knew what a a word meant and a Shakespearean interpretation, not interpretation of the word itself. But I mean. They, the modern Bibles now give you a better look into the way the original concept was. Because we use a New World Translation. It's a, it's a great student's Bible. Do you have your New World Translation there handy? Sure, I do. Could you turn to Revelation chapter 1? What do you want to know about it? I just want to ask you a couple of questions. Go ahead, ask me. Okay. I haven't got it open. It's All right. Good. Revelation 1.8 yeah. Uh, says, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Yeah. Now, who, who is that speaking? Uh, who is that, is that speaking? Is that Jehovah God? Jehovah is over Jesus. He mm -hmm. is the Son of God. Okay. Uh, so many people think that Jesus and Jehovah are the same one. When, when, when Jesus said, my father and I are one. He didn't mean they were one in person. They were one just like you have to say uh, Republicans or Democrats have the same mindset, the same thing. That's how they are one in that area. Mm. Now, uh, uh, in, but in verse 8, that's Jehovah God speaking, right? I am the Alpha and Omega. Jehovah God is uh, the Alpha and Omega, right? Certainly. He is. In the end. All right. he, what did he <clears throat> give Jesus when, right. he's in his, when he has been resurrected? He gave him immortality. Okay. But in verse 18 of chapter 1 of Revelation, yeah. uh, the same person is speaking, and he says, I am he who lives and was dead, and, be Jesus. and behold, I am alive forevermore. Right. That's right. That's Jesus who was speaking. He was alive in the heavenly class. He was brought to earth, and he died here, and he was resurrected. So, the word my, resurrection means restanding up. But my point is, Mickey, the same person who's speaking in verse 18 is the same person who's speaking in verse 8. Yeah. Okay. So Jesus is Jehovah. No, Jesus isn't Jehovah. Jehovah is All right. Jehovah is the father of Jesus. Jesus says, I am the son of God. I am the son. All right. The angels of God, who do they worship? Do they worship Jehovah God or do they worship Jesus? No, they worship Jehovah. Jesus okay. was an angel before the word angel means messenger. You know? All right. Do you have do you have a pencil there? Yeah. Could you write down Hebrews one? Do you know what it is? Hebrews one verses five through seven okay and and study that because it says here for to wh which of the angels did he ever say you are my son today i have begotten you and again i will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son but when he again brings the firstborn into the world he says let all the angels of god worship him that's right they're worshiping jesus that's right that what they're doing there is worshiping his relationship with jehovah he is, they are looking down. Don't forget, he was the head of all the angelic force. He was the one who was through him all things were created. Without him, not one thing was created. In other words, Jehovah is like the captain of a ship, and he gives a command. He says, turn right. The, the captain doesn't turn the wheel. His chief uh, agent changes, turns the wheel. Mm -hmm. And right. Jehovah, Jehovah gave him everything to do. Take a look, take a look at the, uh, book at the opening of John. It tells us that all things were made through him, and without him, not one thing was created. Right. 
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was a God. Well, that's where our our, uh, our, our New World Translation friends have inserted the article. I can get you information on that. We have one more verse, Mickey. Go ahead. Uh, 1 John 5.20. What's it say? 1 John 5.20, it says, We know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true. In his Son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. Okay, now what is eternal life? What is the true God? Well, we know the true God is Jehovah. But, but Jesus Christ. No, Jesus was the Son of God. Jesus was, didn't create God. Jesus was not, and God aren't the same one. Because people, might, we have another per, per thing in there that people look to. They say, Holy Spirit. Now, Holy Spirit is the power of Jehovah. Now, that comes from the, from the Lord Nefesh, meaning the, the breath of life. Well, it says clearly here that he is the true God and eternal life. In verse 7 of chapter 5 of 1 John, it says, There are three who bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. All right, they're one in unity. It's not one in person. It's not one object. God doesn't ha isn't split up in three different areas. The Father and the Son, all like a true son, would have the same feeling, the same relationship, the same wisdom that his Father had given him. Now, the Holy Spirit is the power of Jehovah. All right, hold on just a second, Mickey. Let's take a couple of calls here. This is sure. Kevin. Kevin, good morning. Welcome to uh, Mornings with Tim and Alan, Mickey Spillane. Good morning. I have a scripture in Hebrews 1, 8, um, where the Father is, is saying to the Son, but to the Son he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness, is a scepter of your kingdom. And this is this is a mystery um, that we'll never understand fully until you know. Right now, we see through a glass darkly, but we must give the the credit of divinity to Jesus that the Father says that He is. Uh, in John, it also says before Abra he's he was talking to the uh, Pharisees, and he says before Abraham was, I am. John eight fifty eight. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And uh, you know, you really need to. Uh, carefully consider all the scriptures in um, you know together what there's he is both God and man the son and God you know and it, like I said it's a mystery we'll never understand fully why not until we get to, until we get to heaven because we see through a glass darkly what, what tell me where do you get this idea of going to heaven because he promised us eternal life and his word is true eternal life is right I want to live. I don't want to go to heaven there's nothing in heaven for me oh I sure he do promised you heaven to a small group it was 144,000 that's enumerated in, in, in Revelation he's but then a, there's another group a great crowd that comes in there too and that great crowd is the earthly crowd if God wanted angels he would have put angels up there he wouldn't have put us through this thing on life here to make us bent to go to heaven well, I would love to live forever right on this earth. I love this earth. I love the creation. But I don't want to be an 80-year-old, feeble old guy, which I'm not feeble yet, but I want to be able to enjoy it in perfect health, perfect happiness. It's great. Adam and Eve had it, and they blew it. Yes, they did. Have, where would Adam and Eve, how long would Adam and Eve have lived had they not touched the tree? Well, see, he's going to give you a brand new resurrection body like he has. Why? One that'll live forever. Why? I can I can live forever right here on Earth. Well, it's it's not going to happen with this body, and I would just encourage you to look at all the scriptures together because that's the standard. Well, do. God's word. But answer me this: How long would Adam and Eve had lived? How would they have? How long would they have been on Earth before they, they sinned? sinned? Before they sinned? No. If they had never sinned, God oh, yeah. said, "If you touch that tree, you will surely die." All right. Now, supposing they didn't touch that tree, how long would they live? I, yeah. guess, I guess they would have lived forever. That's right, and that's what God put us here for. And we're going to go back to that purpose. That's let's, what Jesus came down for, was to give us another shot at it. But but see, when we sinned, when Adam sinned, he blew it, and he passed the curse of sin and death. He on, did on that to us. We did. That's why Jesus and, came, to give us an opportunity to take that sin away. And, and Jesus is called the second Adam. That's right, and Adam was a living creature on this earth. He wasn't a heavenly creature. I, I, would just say, I, I would just say, look in the scripture before the New World Translation, uh, but, but before the um, the organization got a hold of the scripture, look into it and see what it says before they they retranslate it, okay? 
statement. Didn't retranslate it? Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Okay. All right. Okay. Mickey, you, do you know that you have eternal life? No, I hope I have. You hope, but the Bible says in 1 John 5, 13 that you can know that you have eternal life. That's right. You can know that, but I'm not one of those that are of the 144,000 class. We can slip. Where, where does it class. say that the Jehovah's Witnesses are 144,000? It says, it says that there's the 12 tribes of Israel. It, it doesn't say anything. Look in Revelation. Yeah, I know it mentions 144,000, but it gives the, which tribe are you? I don't belong to the tribe. That, that's, a, that's a symbolic system right there. Mm -hmm. I don't belong to the, one of the 12 tribes. We belong to an earthly class called the Great Crowd. Now, that's in Rev Re Revelation. So it talks to you about the 144,000 that are standing before the throne. Those, that's all. Where, where is the plan of salvation in the Bible for the Great Crowd? It's, uh, I haven't got my Bible open in front of me. You got me at a disadvantage. I could, and, uh, but I'll tell you, it's right there. Look, up, look it up in Revelation. There were several other calls, but we're going to have to move on. We've got a number of spots to do, and we've got Dave Hunt on uh, hold. We want to, to get to him and get his response to what he heard. How, yeah. how would he have critiqued us? What would he have said instead of uh, uh, what we said? That's coming up in just a minute on Mornings with Tim and Al. I'm Tim Barron. I'm Al Gross. A number of you had uh, great calls for Mickey Splain yesterday, but we wanted to move on. We've had Dave Hunt holding for a half hour now, and Dave, thank you so much for holding on. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to uh, Mornings with Tim and Al. Dave Hunter, internationally known author and lecturer, author of how many books now? <laughs> not as many as Mickey. I, <laughs> I think 27. 27. I'm not right. quite as old as he is, and I didn't get started that soon in writing. That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, he got started very young. All right, what would you say to Mickey? Well, guys, uh, you know, I'm not going to critique you because... Um, very difficult to, I think it's amazing you got him to, to talk as openly as he did. Seems like a nice guy, seemed like he was willing to do it. I'm uh, surprised that he researched <laughs> and thought it was true. Um, but, um, I, you know, and, and again, it's difficult to do on the radio, but I think, first of all, uh, you jumped around too much. Yeah. You have to stick with one thing. Uh huh. You got to settle one thing at a time. When I can tell you, when a uh, Jehovah's Witness knocks on my door, I you, you recognize them, of course. Mm -hmm. I have a particular approach with them. I say, "Oh, you're Jehovah's Witnesses." Well, so am I. <laughs> but I'm a true witness for Jehovah, and you are false witnesses. You come right out and say that. Oh yeah. Because doesn't that kind of uh, I, I I I think if we insult them right away, doesn't that kind of close their mind? Well. See, I'm not saying you should have done that with Mickey. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, but this is somebody on the doorstep. They're not going to leave. Mm -hmm. They're there to convert you. So you have to do two things with a... This is a cult, of course. Yes. Right. You have to do two things. You have to, number one, get their attention, and then you have to control the conversation. Now, I've started the conversation, and then I turn them to... Uh, like you did at one point, but you you moved right on too fast. Should I stuck with? Uh, should I have just stuck with Revelation one and? and well, no. I, I, here's where I, I, I just falling on my approach here. Okay. I say let's turn to First John chapter nine. Uh, it talks about the witness. First John, there's no nine chapters in First John. I'm sorry, First John five nine. First John five nine. Uh, it talks about the witness of Jehovah. Let's find out what the witness of Jehovah is. Uh, and it says, if we re and say, you know, where it says God, let's put in Jehovah. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of Jehovah is greater. And this is the witness of Jehovah, which he has testified of his Son. So the witness of Jehovah is all about his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself, or the Son of Jehovah, I'm sorry, hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not Jehovah hath made him a liar. Because he believeth not the record or the witness that Jehovah gave of his son. And this is the record or the witness that Jehovah has given to us eternal life. And this life is in his son. So eternal life is a gift. You can't earn a gift. You can't work for it and so forth. I can tell these people I've knocked on more doors than they have. But I've done it not to earn eternal life, which they're doing, mm -hmm. but out of gratitude to the one who gave it to me. Mm -hmm. He that has the Son has life. He that has not the Son of God has not life. And then we get to, uh, I'm going real fast, faster than I would with these people, but we get to verse 13, the one you read, the, or, or you referred to. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of Jehovah, that you may know 
that's present knowledge that you have, uh, that's present possession, eternal life. <clears throat> and uh, I asked him, like you asked him, do you have eternal life? And he said, and he hoped to have it. And you said, what well, you could know that you have it. And he said, well, that's for the 144,000. But it tells you to whom that verse was written. It doesn't say it was written to the 144,000. It says, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of Jehovah. Well, what is his name? Isaiah 9, 6 tells us, his name is, shall we call, Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God. Now, Jehovah's Witness will say, well, that's Mighty God, not Almighty God. Come to that in a minute. Uh, but I can give you 37 verses in the Old Testament where, it, where Jehovah is called Mighty God. It doesn't matter whether you're Mighty or Almighty. If you're God, you're God. There's only one God. But then, but what's his next name? The Everlasting Father. So the babe that was born in Bethlehem, the son that was given to us, and the babe that was born in Bethlehem is also called the Everlasting Father. makes it pretty clear that when Jesus said, I and my Father are one, he's not just one in purpose and meaning and so forth. So uh, it, it, it very clearly says, to whom it is written, it is written to those who believe on the name of the Son of God. Um, so you have to, and I'll just stay, stay with them. Do you want eternal life? You can have eternal life as a free gift. You can know that you have it, but you can't earn it. You can't work for it. You can only receive it, and it is in the Son of Jehovah. And if you receive him, you have eternal life. But you don't receive him. Indeed, these, this verse wasn't written to you because you don't believe in his name. You don't believe that he is the everlasting Father. And I just hang right there until we, we, we deal with that. All right. And, and Mickey would probably, and I want you to address this in just a minute, he would probably say, well, how can the Son be the Father? We'll continue with uh, Dave Hunt, the author of some great books. You need to pick them up at your local Christian bookstores. We'll uh, do that in just a minute. By the way, if you'd like to talk to Dave Hunt, uh, as the British would say, it's time to queue up because uh, we don't have very much time with him. 314-969-6300, talking about the interview we did with Mickey Spillane, specifically with the Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> AM 630 Talk Radio, KJSL. Now, I know this is review for most of us, but because we have uh, so many new listeners that come on all the time, uh, you had made a comment, uh, Dave, that uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses are a cult, and I remember being shocked, because I almost became one, when uh, the guy who led me to Christ, John Gregory, said, well, the, the Jehovah's Witnesses are a cult. And I thought, well, wait a minute, Charles Manson is a cult. Uh, guys who, who do voodoo rituals and, uh, and uh, sacrifice chickens, that's a cult. But uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses being a cult, uh, and, and we don't have to go into great detail, but what does that mean? Well, you know, that's one of the things I'm surprised about Mickey Spillane, because he's an intelligent man who thinks for himself. Mm -hmm. But you can't do that in a cult. Mm -hmm. First mark of a cult, you have to leave your mind uh, at the door. And you've got to accept what they say. Now, he has to accept what the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, headquartered in Brooklyn, says. He cannot disagree with it. If he disagrees with it, then he's out. They'll put him out. Uh, that's not reasonable. And the Bible doesn't indicate that. For example, uh, Psalm 119.9, it says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. It doesn't say he has to check with a rabbi or the Pope, you know, or, or a priest, but a young man is supposed to be able to understand the Bible. In fact, Second uh, Timothy 3.15, Paul writes to Timothy and he says, From a child, you have known the Holy Scriptures that are able to make you wise unto salvation. He learned it from his mother and his grandmother. His father was a Greek. His father wasn't a rabbi. So, first of all, the Bible is supposed to be understandable to any uh, or normal human being. Uh, we're supposed to read it and know what it says. Psalm 1 1. Blessed is the man that meditates in his law day and night. And Mickey Spillane can't do that. Uh, he says he investigated. That's one of the first things that was of interest to me. He says, well, he checked it out and found it to be true. Now, in his particular case, uh, rather than the approach that I say I take with somebody on the door, I would have said, wait a minute, surely you know 
that this all began with Charles T. Russell's false prophecies back there. That was how the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, the Jehovah's Witnesses, were formed. He said the Second Coming had taken place invisibly in October 1874. The Lord was truly present, and that in 1914, the faithful, that is the 144,000, would be translated to heaven and the wicked would be destroyed. Uh, he, he, they taught that Armageddon began in 1874. It would culminate in 1914 with the complete overthrow of Earth's rulers. Well, uh, it didn't happen. And he died in 1969, still on this earth. Then, in the early 20s, the JWs were distributing in the streets and from door to door a book titled, Millions Now Living Will Never Die. And in that book, it prophesied, quote, I'm quoting directly from it, the year 1925 is a date definitely and clearly marked in the scriptures, even more clearly than that of 1914. We may confidently expect that 1925 will mark the return of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the faithful prophets of old to the condition of human perfection. They even built a house in San Diego, where the patriarchs were to live, and they tried to deed it to King David. That's how sure they were of 1925. Well, in 1954, they quietly, without any publicity, sold the house. In the early 1940s, they were declaring that Armageddon was only months away. They wrote a book called Children that suggested plans to marry and have children ought to be postponed until after Armageddon. It's been a long wait. And then, not giving up, a new prophecy said God's millennial kingdom would commence in 1975 and so forth. They, many quit their jobs. They sold their homes. They, they, you know. So I would have asked him if he investigated. Uh, what did he think of some? Uh, they have a history of false prophecies mm -hmm. after the other. How can he have confidence in this organization? What happened when the uh, when Abraham, David, and uh, who else was it was supposed to come back and live at, in well, Bethlehem? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, hey, well, all the right. faithful yeah. prophets of old, including David. Yeah. Now, what happened when these uh, these great prophets did not show up? Well, they did anybody move into the house? Uh, no, they kept it there, available for them. Okay, I thought Judge Rutherford moved into it. Uh, right there. He, well, he may have, yeah. but, but the point was they're holding it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then finally they, they sold it. Yeah. But the point is, they have made false prophecy after false prophecy. Yeah. And uh, that doesn't give you much confidence. Anyway. What do you say to, uh, to Mickey, how can the son be the father at the same time? Because I'm sure he would have brought that up. Yeah. And a lot of people have that question. Well... First of all, the son has to be the father, and the father has to be the son, because all through the Old Testament, God, Jehovah, Yahweh, says over and over, Isaiah 43, 11, for example, and many other verses, that, um, that he is the only Savior. And, and it's very clear, many times, Jehovah in the Old Testament says, beside me there is no Savior. I am the only Savior. But the angel said, uh, uh, unto us this, is, this day is born in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Jesus Christ is clearly the Savior. Even Mickey said he came, he came to save us, you know, from our sins. Well, how can he be the Savior if he's not Jehovah? Now, uh, well, then how can, how can there be three who, who are one? Well, all through the Old Testament, I mean, you guys know this as well or better than I do. Uh, for example, John, uh, uh, Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But the word there is Elohim. It's a plurality. Plural. It literally says God's created the heavens and the earth. Verses 27, 28, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. All through the Old Testament, you have this, this about 2,700 times, Elohim, God's. Gods, and yet you have a strange thing because you have a, a, a personal, you have a singular a, a pronoun and a singular verb. So it's gods who speak to Moses, for example, in Exodus 3, um, but gods, it's Elohim, but they don't say, but Jehovah, Yahweh doesn't say we are that we are, but I am that I am. And you cannot escape it all through the Old Testament. There is a plurality and a singularity. Now, the reason for this is because you must have both uh, unity and diversity. The Jehovah's Witnesses believe in a Jehovah who, before he created any beings, was incomplete in himself. He couldn't fellowship, he couldn't experience love and communion and so forth. 
he was lonely. He he was incomplete. Uh, uh, he had to create beings before he could experience this. But the Bible says God is love. Uh, on the other end of the scale, you have a plurality of gods, the, the Greeks, the Romans, the, the Hindus, and so forth. You've got diversity, but you have no unity. But the Bible teaches us God is one being, All right. three persons, both unity and diversity. All right, we'll get to the phones and your calls for uh, Dave Hunt in just a minute on Mornings with Tim and Al. All right, the callers are lined up. Let's go right to the phones and Jim in Fairmont City. Thanks for holding on, Jim. Uh, Jim's on two, I think. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. hold right, on. Hang just on. a sec here. Okay, right. Jim. Good morning, Jim. Yeah, hi. How you doing? Good. Fine. Thanks for waiting. Hey, th hey, thanks for letting me come in. Sure. Uh, whenever I first uh, listened to you coming home from work, you was talking to Mickey, and I thought it was live, but the producer said no. No. Yeah. But anyway, here's a couple of scripture that I'd like to uh, run by Mr. Hunt. Uh uh, uh, and uh, Hebrews 1 9, it says, God, even thy God, I'm not going to read the whole scripture, shows uh, two persons in the Trinity. And uh, there, and over in the uh, 19th chapter of uh, uh, Genesis, in the 24th verse, uh, right after they, uh, the angels, uh, they were called the angels, uh, got a uh, lot out of Sodom, and uh, said, Then the Lord reigned upon Sodom and Gomorrah fire and brimstone from the Lord out of heaven. Uh, now this is should be right in agreement with what you're talking about and he's talking about because in the Jehovah's Witness Bible, over in the 19th chapter of Genesis there, it says, and, one, and, and the Jehovah on earth rained down fire and brimstone from the Jehovah out of heaven. So they have recorded two Jehovahs in that one particular chapter. I did not look this up in, uh, in the uh, Jehovah's Witness Bible in Hebrews 1 and 9, but I'm sure that if you would look it up, it would say Jehovah, even Je Je Jehovah, even thy Jehovah. All right. And, um, and uh, remember, David says, the Lord said unto my Lord, mm -hmm. sit on my right hand till I make your enemy my, my footstool. What psalm is that, Jim? Uh, I, if I'm not mistaken, it's uh, 68. If I'm not, I could be mistaken. I, I, I'm, I'm atrocious. If okay. I don't have it in front of me, I'll, I'll forget it. Okay, thank uh, you. Thank you, Jim. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Right. Right. Dave, you know what Psalm that is? Is that Psalm 110? <clears throat> I think it is. Okay. Um, well, I, I'll just give Jim, if he's listening, a, a better verse. Uh, Isaiah 48, 16. Come ye near unto me, hear ye this. I have not spoken in secret. From the beginning, from the time that it was, there am I. This person who is there from the beginning must be God. And then he says, and now the Lord God and his spirit have sent me. You got the Trinity. You, you cannot escape it. But uh, anyway, uh, it's, it's, it's quite clear through scriptures. Uh, and, and just a, a, a quick example. Okay. Uh, you know the book that was written, The Secret of the Universe, many, many years ago. Uh, and he said, look, if God is a trinity, you ought to find his fingerprints in the universe around you. What is the universe made of? It's made up of three things, space, matter, and time. Space is made up of three things, length, breadth, and height. Time is made up of three things, past, present, and future, and so forth. You take enough lines and running lengthwise, <clears throat> you take in all the space. Widthwise, you take... It, it, they're poor analogies, mm -hmm. but you can see that w the, there, there can be three that are distinct and separate, and yet they are, are one. Mm -hmm. And this is what the Bible presents us uh, in, in the Godhead. All right, let's go to Verna on line three from Vanita Park, Missouri. Park, Missouri. Good morning, Verna. Welcome to Mornings with Tim and Alan, Dave Hunt. Good morning. I heard him yesterday morning and yesterday afternoon on Deborah's show, and again this morning, and there's a point that I would like for us all to remember. The man did not say he investigated the organization. He said that he did his studying in their Bible only, and we need to remember that because what they do is they love them so much and they teach them so well that if they don't compare scriptures. And see, we're taught to use our brain and to study to show ourselves approved, but not just to take what is fed us. Uh -huh. Yeah, see, he's, he's spouting the party line. That's how, that's how you know it's not independent study, but uh, uh, the, yeah. the, the, the fingerprints of, of Watchtower are all over him. Yeah. Well, but even, even... Thank you, Brian. Uh-huh. Yeah. 
Go ahead, Dave. Thanks, thanks for that. But even from his Bible, their favorite verse, of course, and, and you referred to it just briefly and then uh, moved on, uh, John 1.1. 1, 1. Uh-huh. And they say, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was the God, the Word was a God, spelled a little g. Mm-hmm. Well, wait a minute, we got a problem there. Is Jesus a little God? All through the Old Testament, Jehovah says, I am God, there is none else. Beside me, there isn't, I, in fact, Jehovah says, I've checked this whole universe out, and there isn't any other God. And in, in Jeremiah 10, 10 and 11, says, you say to the gods, that's spelled with a little g, who haven't made the heavens and the earth, they will perish from under this heaven. All, all other gods except the one true God are false gods. So you've got two gods in their Bible in John 1.1. 1, 1. one of them is the true God. Is the other one a false God? Yeah. Well, the other one they say is Jesus. Well, is Jesus a false God? Then what kind of a God is he? They've got a big God and a little God. It doesn't make sense. It's not biblical. So even from their Bible, they, they should recognize that. Hold on uh, just a couple more minutes, Dave, if you would. Uh, Dave Hunt is with us on Mornings with Tim and Al. Well, Mickey Spillane, uh, you've been listening to the last half hour, and uh, we encourage you to write Dave Hunt. Here's his address. Uh, wait a minute. Brian Call. Okay. Post Office Box 7019, Bend, Oregon, 97708. That's Brian Call, Post Office Box 7019, Bend, Oregon, 97708 dash 7019. That's 97708-7019. And Mick, you have the same offer that all of our listeners have. You get a free monthly newsletter uh, if you just ask. And I'd like uh, Mickey to write Dave. Uh, we're going to send him the tape of this program. And uh, Dave, would you answer Mickey if he writes you? Oh, I certainly would. Okay. Now, do you have any of your books, do they deal with the Jehovah's Witnesses if people want more information? Um... Or is there any book that you could recommend out there? Uh, the Cult Explosion is one of my books, but at the moment I think it's out of print. We're out of print. in the process of revising and updating it. But you do deal with the cults every month in your newsletter. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. We, so. we deal with that. But there are a number of, of good books uh, I would recommend. Uh, if I can find some on my shelf here quickly, where are we? Robert Moray's How to Answer a Jehovah's Witness. Yeah, the Watchtower Files, I would certainly recommend. Is that John Ankerberg and John Weldon? Oh, that's by uh, Dwayne Magnani. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses' Errors Exposed, that's, a, that's an older one. Uh, but uh, I have some other documentaries, you know, that... Okay. Uh, I don't know that they're really in in print. Okay, all give right. You the inside information of what's been happening there. Well, we appreciate you being on with us this morning, and I uh, hope this gives uh, us a little more information when these precious people come to our doors. We shouldn't be slamming the doors in their face. We should be trying to uh, win them to the Lord. Yeah. You know, Mickey doesn't want to go to heaven, but Jesus said to set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. He said that he had come from heaven and was going back to heaven, and he said he would return and take his own to heaven, to his Father's house of many mansions. Yeah, and Revelation 19.1 says there's a multitude in heaven. Will we be spending eternity on earth and heaven? I believe so, yeah. Okay. All right. Tomorrow, uh, hold on just a second, if you would, Dave. Okay. Tomorrow, Dr. Kent Hoven will be with us. Uh, we took... Uh, the microphone to Parkway North High School in Maryland Heights and ask students to ask Dr. Hoban questions. They did for a free double cheeseburger from Steak and Shake. And we'll talk with Charles Hummel in the 8 o'clock hour. Freedom from Tyranny of the Urgent. That's a classic Tyranny of the Urgent. This is a new book by Charles Hummel. And John Vara, Home Wisdom, Farmer's Almanac in the 9 o'clock hour. Live for the Lord. Bring home all A's. Tell your friends and neighbors about Jesus. Remember, I love you, especially Chris, David, and Jackie.